Greetings, one and all. Welcome to Richard's Rock Rambles Live Albums. So in this episode, we're going to have a look at probably, for me, one of the top five live albums, in particular in the hard rock genre, and more specifically of the 70s, when most of the live albums came out. Um, to this day, you can play this album and it still excites. I mean, it hasn't aged um, badly. It's aged very well, in fact. And I think a lot of it goes towards the, the great musicianship on the album and the band were just firing at that particular time. So what am I waffling on about? Deep Purple's Made in Japan, which has had a few re-releases. I think it's had two re-releases. Um, and the original album came out way back in 1972. It was over three nights in Japan, um, in particular... Uh, it was recorded at the Festival Hall, first of all, in Osaka, on the 15th, the 16th, and the 17th of August, 1972. There were two concerts, in fact. Osaka was on the 15th and the 16th, and the 17th was in Nippon Budokan in Tokyo. So three nights of classic-era Mark II lineup, Deep Purple, firing on all cylinders. It was released on the 8th of December, 1972, so couple of months later, and it was engineered by the great Martin Birch, who of course did a lot of the Deep Purple albums. He did Machine Head. Um, I think he was involved with a subsequent album, Who Do We Think We Are?, which would prove to be the final album for both Ian Gillen on vocals and Roger Glover on bass. They were given the old Hevo, and then in came Coverdale and Glenn Hughes. So Martin Birch was the engineer for this live album and a great engineer. Sadly, uh, no longer with us, but uh, yeah, he was involved with so many great albums, Maiden, Deep Purple, Black Sabbath. Yeah. Um, so it was re-released in 1998 and 2014. I have the re-released 1998, which I will show you just now. The 2014 contains nine albums, nine LPs, uh, which contain a new remix of the three concerts in full a DVD of unseen footage, and a hardback book, and other memorabilia. Uh, memorabilia. I say that word. <laughs> it's too early in the morning. I need more coffee. So yeah, that, that's the ultimate deluxe edition, which I don't have. I might get that one day. But you know, you can only buy an album so many times. But I think for the extras on that particular one, I might decide to shell out a bit of cash. So the album went platinum in the US, Germany, Italy, and Austria. So that's pretty good going, and gold in the UK and France. So, like I've said before, for a live album to achieve those kind of sales, there's no mean feat. You know, you'd expect a studio album to do that, but a live album, it's kind of like a niche thing, really. But yeah, in the 70s, there were so many good ones, like Frampton's, which I've spoken about already, um, and this particular album, uh, Deep Purple's Made in Japan, which for me is a, you got to have it. it. It shows you exactly what hard rock, where hard rock was at in the early 70s. So this is my original vinyl copy. With that great cover there, that live shot. And that's the back shot. And then if you open it up. There we go. There's all the guys, Roger Glover, John Lord and Richie Blackmore at the top there. And then you've got Ian Pace, Ian Gillen. And that was just a live shot of the band. So what were the tracks you had on here? Kicking off with Highway Star, that really up-tempo rocker with great keyboard work from John Lord. That was in Osaka. Then Child in Time, which they had to do, which Ian Gillen I don't think can do anymore. Those high pitch screaming. I think those days are gone for Ian. Smoke on the Water, obviously they had to play that. And The Mule, which was a drum showcase for Ian Pace. Japanese audiences don't get crazy. You know, they sort of sit there and clap very, uh, you know, this. and that. But at the end of the concert, then they get up and scream. So they're very reserved. But I think they really appreciate the music. You know, they're there for the music. That's the thing with Japanese audiences. Um, then you had Strange Kind of Woman, Lazy, that very long track. And Space Trucking, which was the longest track on here, that was on side four of the original vinyl. What I liked about this era of Deep Purple was the jam aspect. These guys would go into these long extended jams 
instead of just doing a three a four minute song they would do 16 20 minute songs which you can't do today so yeah that was the uh, the vinyl that i had then this is the 1998 reissue which comes with a whole bunch of well in fact is a second disc which has three bonus tracks um so what they've done here is they've inverted it. instead of this being gold they've made this black so you can see the difference there that's the gold and that's the black so that's what they do with the cover and then if you look on the inside so the the bonus tracks on your know, black knight which was a single released by deep purple which was actually a really good uh, good track speed king another lengthy track up tempo great interplay between richie blackmore and john lord on keyboards and guitar and lucille which was that sort of cover you know a lot of bands your eye heap deep purple led zeppelin they all covered the classic sometimes as encores the old rock and roll staples and uh, so that's eight minutes the longest track on here is space trucking 19 minutes and 53 seconds yeah that's how it was done back in the day in fact the shortest track would be probably highway star which is six minutes long so you can see what i mean by the jam aspect they didn't just do a song and finish they said lengthened it and each guy had a turn whether it was the drummer the guitarist the keyboardist um, in those days, Ian Gillen also used to have a pair of bongos on stage that he would play. And God knows how anybody heard those bongos with keyboards, guitar, bass, and drums. And those guys were all mic'd to the max. So I think it was pretty much just for show because you wouldn't be able to hear them. Um, yeah, so this is the, re, uh, the reissue. I'm going to get the 2014 one day. But yeah, you know, money's always an issue. So inside here you get the whole story of the the recordings, the three nights, who was in the band. Uh, there's a great shot of Richie Blackmore, and that's Ian Pace behind the kit with his Ludwig drum kit. Ludwig was very popular back in the seventies. I think him and John Bonham played both uh, both played Ludwigs. There's a shot of Roger Glover with his hat on, his trademark hat back in the day. I think he was still playing a Rickenbacker in those days. And that's just the middle piece, same as the vinyl. There's Ian Gillen. Customary stance for the mic stand. When his voice was still super powerful. I mean, they'd just come off Machine Head, which was a groundbreaking album for them as well, as well as In Rock. The one after this live album, Who Do We Think We Are, was where the cracks started to appear. And there was a lot of tension in the band, but in particular between Ian Gillen and Richie Blackmore which would, of course, explode later on. And then Blackman would come back and then leave again for good. Just two combustible guys. Egos, yeah. And there's the late, great John Lord. So sad that he's not around anymore. What I liked about John Lord was he was the perfect gentleman. It's the exact opposite to Richie Blackmore. Chalk and cheese. So how they stayed together in the band for so long is beyond me. But I think, you know, you're doing it for the greater good of the band, I suppose. And this is a original in-store poster, which they had in their record stores back in the day. Deep Purple made in Japan. And that was them in Japan, August 1972. God, flies. Anything in Cape Town in summer? Flies. My pet hate. There's one creature on earth that can disappear for good. It's the fly. Anyway, <laughs> back to the music. So, yeah, this is a... And then at the back here, they also tell you all the other albums that have been re-released with bonus tracks. And I must say, the remastering on these and the sound is really great. Um, although the original live album with Martin Birch at the helm, the sound is pretty good. You know, you, sometimes with a live album, you get too much crowd noise or you get too little or the drums are too loud or the guitars are too loud but i think he got the balance just right with made in japan so there we go made in japan deep purple for me it's a must-have if you're into hard rock with keyboards and guitar classic rock that's the one to get so next time around we're going to look at a, a gentleman who's still going today and his live album from 1976, 75 or 76, I think. 
for me, is one of the best showcases of blues rock guitar you're going to find. I'm talking about Robin Trower. Prior to him going solo, he was part of Procol Harum, and he released this great live album just called Robin Trower Live in 1976. I think it was 75 or 76. We'll get to it next time. But yeah, a great album, and uh, we'll go into a little bit more detail next time around. Have yourselves a great week. Take it easy. Like and subscribe down below. Any comments, more than welcome. And I'll catch you next time. Cheers.